Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABG News. My name is Mtolisi, the son of Nume. Uh, I hope I find you all well wherever you are all over the world. Uh, I'm making this video to respond to some uh, inquiries from people who have been inboxing me following latest developments, especially in the United States. I'm also making this to clarify a few issues that I've seen flying around pertaining to the declaration that was recently made, I think it was yes, made yesterday, by the United States of America president, that is Joe Biden. You will remember that uh, he made a declaration yesterday uh, in as far as Zimbabwe is concerned. And that now what has happened is that there are several people uh, who then now believe that uh, the declaration is now a lifting of U.S. sanctions against Zimbabwe. And this is what we seek to clarify because we see also even the media is running with that story that the American government is via its president or through its president's declaration um, lifted its sanctions against Zimbabwe. So this is what we want to clarify because at the end of the day, it is of no use for us to then lie to each other to run with a wrong story so this is what we want to talk about but before i go ahead can i request that you subscribe to this channel like this video and share it uh so now what is the latest regarding joe biden in the united states of uh, of america what has happened is that uh, the U.S. has not lifted uh, its sanctions on Zimbabwe, but the declaration by Joe Biden only applies to the new executive order, uh, which speaks directly to an executive order that was issued in 2003. So we have to be uh, very clear about that. And now the White House says in a statement that it has imposed certain sanctions on new people. Uh, and it says sanctions on these individuals and entities do not represent sanctions on Zimbabwe or its public. The administration reaffirms its commitment to work with the people of Zimbabwe, will continue to robustly support civil society, human rights defenders, and independent media to promote values consistent with the Zimbabwe economy zimbabwe democracy and economic recovery act of 2001 so as i have said the united states government has through the uh, department of the treasury treasury's office of foreign assets control placed 11 individuals and three entities uh, accused of being involved in corruption or serious human rights abuses and these include also president emerson nangako so now, as a way of clarifying, as I have said, that the sanctions against Zimbabwe have not been removed, but the declaration uh, that there has been some form of a thawing of relations between Zimbabwe and the United States uh, is contained in the declaration involving executive order, an executive order that was made by first uh, George W. Bush in March 2003. Now, these are not the sanctions that we talk about when we say that Zimbabwe is under sanctions from the United States government. Zimbabwe is under sanctions as contained, as I have read, uh, in the Zimbabwe Democracy and Econom Economic Recovery Act. In short, it is called ZDERA. And ZDERA was not enacted in 2003. When this executive order was made in 2003, it was a follow-up to Zidera, which makes a provision for some individuals who have been identified as responsible for human rights abuses and the blocking of democracy in Zimbabwe. But this is in addition to the Zimbabwean government being sanctioned under the Zidera and also officials under who work for the Zimbabwean government also being sanctioned uh, under Zidera. So these are the individuals that uh, in section 6, uh, uh, let me read section 6 
which then makes provision for the executive order which was made in 2003, says of Congress on the, sanction, on the actions to be taken against individuals responsible for violence and the breakdown of the rule of law in Zimbabwe. It is the sense of Congress that the President should begin immediate consultation with the governments of European Union, member states, Canada, and other appropriate foreign countries on ways in which to, number one, identify and share information regarding individuals responsible for the deliberate breakdown of the rule of law, politically motivated violence, and intimidation in Zimbabwe. Number two, identify assets of those individuals held outside Zimbabwe. Number three, implement travel and economic sanctions against those individuals and their associates and families. And number four, provide for the eventual removal or amendment of those sanctions. So this was approved in December 21, 2001. This is part of this of the Zidera. But uh, the Zidera, as I have said, uh, is a sanction against the government of Zimbabwe. It is a sanction against the government of Zimbabwe and senior officials who work for the government of Zimbabwe. So what we're going to do here is we are going to then uh, attach a link to Zidera underneath this video so that you can read on your own. Uh, but in part it says uh, multilateral financial financing restriction until the president makes the certification prescribed in subsection D and except as may be required to meet basic human needs of a good governance, the Secretary of the Treasury shall instruct the United States Executive Director to each international financial institution to oppose and vote against, number one, any extension by the respective institution of any loan, credit, or guarantee to the government of Zimbabwe, or number two, any cancellation or reduction of indebtedness owed by the government of Zimbabwe to the United States or any international financial institution. So, these are parts uh, of the Zidera which specifically state that the sanctions as written in Zidera or as contained in Zidera are not against individuals but against the government of Zimbabwe. So, when we say some of us, when we say that the United States of America must lift the sanctions against Zimbabwe, we are talking about Zidera. We have got no reason to interfere where individuals like the likes of Emerson Nangakwa and members, members of his government, members of his cabinet, or members of his party, ZANU-PF, are sanctioned because we also have a bone to grind with them. We believe that they are guilty as charged. In as far as the blocking of democracy is concerned, in as far as human rights abuses are concerned, in as far as the free media is blocked in Zimbabwe. But we say that the government of Zimbabwe, although it is under these people, cannot be sanctioned because when you, gov when you sanction a government, you are sanctioning these very people that you seek to protect with these sanctions. So at the end of the day, the people are then thrown between a rock and a hard surface. And also, the main, main, main reason why we want sanctions removed is because ZANU-PF is using them as a leeway to continue looting, to continue plundering, to continue mismanaging the economy because they hide under sanctions. We know that Zimbabwe is in this dire straits economically because ZANU-PF is misusing uh, public funds. ZANU-PF is mismanaging economic resources of the country, natural resources of the country. ZANU-PF is looting our resources. Zanu PF is looting public funds. Zanu PF is uh, squandering public uh, resources in Zimbabwe and hiding behind sanctions. So now sanctions are available as an easy shield, a convenient shield for Zanu PF to hide behind. So when we lift sanctions or when the sanctions are lifted, Zanu PF becomes an emperor that has no clothes because they cannot use anything to hide behind. This is the reason why we say 
sanctions must be removed so that we are able to pin ZANU PF on the mismanagement of the resources, on the looting that they are doing, on the squandering of the resources in our country. We don't have a reason to be fighting for sanctions against Nangakwa and his family uh, being removed. We have got no reason to be fighting for the removal of sanctions against Nangakwa and his family, against uh, any senior ZANU PF official and their family, because we've got nothing to do with that. But when the government of Zimbabwe is then tied with them, that's when the problems arise because these guys are going to loot resources of the state and then hide behind sanctions. They're going to fail to manage the economy of the state or of the country and then hide behind sanctions. They're going to loot and squander and then hide behind sanctions as they have been doing since 2001. It has been 23 years and these sanctions have failed to drive the point home. They have failed to achieve what they were sought to achieve because the human rights abuses are continuing, the looting and squandering is continuing, the blocking of democratic processes continues. But at the end of the day, ZANU -PF, if there is someone who doesn't want sanctions removed right now, it's ZANU PF because the sanctions have become a shield. And when they go out there to say sanctions must be removed, it's not because they want the sanctions to be removed. That is the reason why they have refused to. Uh, satisfy the conditions for the removal of sanctions. It's not because they cannot. It's because they don't want the sanctions removed so that they continue doing this propaganda, bringing the whole of Africa, dovetailing the whole of Africa into their propaganda war against the United States while continuing to loot and plunder Zimbabwean resources. So I hope, uh, I, I mean the clear right now, that there have been no removal of Zitera, it hasn't been repealed because Zitera is a law that was enacted in the United States in Congress and signed into law in 2001. It's still in place. And even the latest uh, statement from the United States states that they are going to continue working with those bodies that they've mentioned, including civil society and the independent media. In his uh, as stated or outlined in the Zidera law. So the sanctions are still in place against the government of Zimbabwe. The sanctions are still in place against Zimbabwe. But what has happened is that the executive order that Joe Biden alluded to yesterday refers to an executive order that was made in 2003, which is two years after Zidera and applies to the section on Zidera, which says some individuals are going to be identified and sanctioned as individuals. That is additionally to the sanctions that target the Zimbabwean government. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.